All right, we're interested in demonstrating this limit. The limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta divided by theta. Now, if we just plug zero into this equation, we've got a problem. For one thing, we've got zero down here. And another thing, this all work, works out to zero as well. So this is an indeterminate form. So we'll need another method to evaluate this limit. This is theta right here. And now I want to make an observation that this angle theta is equal to uh, one half of the area of this sector. So for example, if, uh, if, the, uh, if theta is pi over four, okay, then the angle, sorry, the area is going to be half of that, which is pi over eight. Okay? And the reason I'm bringing that up is because we want to begin this by comparing areas. Now I'm going to draw a vertical line. And this breaks the original sector up into two parts, A and B. Uh, and I'm going to label this area up here C. So I hope I can safely say that A is going to be less than or equal to the area of A and B together, which will be less than or equal to the area of A plus B plus C altogether. Uh, furthermore, if this is a unit circle, which we were assuming with that angle area correlation, uh, then this line here from the y-axis to this point, that's going to be cosine of theta. And this vertical line here, that's going to be the sine of theta which means that the area A is equal to one half of the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. Now, A plus B, that's our sector, which because this is a unit circle is one half of theta. This vertical line is the tangent of theta. So A plus B plus C is equal to one half the tangent of theta. Because each of these, uh, a is a triangle, so we've got one half at the base times the height. A plus B is the sector of the circle, so that's one half of theta. And A plus B plus C, again, is one half of the base, which is just one, so I didn't include it, times the height, which is tan theta. So now I'm going to take this information and transform it into this inequality. Uh, but I'm going to remove the one half. So I multiply everything by two. So we'll have cosine of theta times the sine of theta is less than or equal to theta itself, which is less than or equal to the tangent of theta theta. Now, we'll take the reciprocal of everything here. And when we do that, we're going to need to flip as well the 
inequality. So the reciprocal of cosine times sine is going to be secant times cosecant theta. And the reciprocal of the tangent of theta is the cotangent of theta. Okay. Now we'll multiply uh, everything by sine theta. So sine times the cosecant, they'll cancel each other out. And we are left with the secant of theta. And that is greater than or equal to sine theta over theta. And that is greater than or equal to cotangent is cosine over sine. So this will be the cosine of theta. Let's evaluate the secant of theta at zero. Secant of theta, secant of zero equals one. And the cosine of zero, being the reciprocal of the secant, also equals one. So as theta approaches zero, these are gonna get closer and closer to one, but the expression in the middle cannot be more than the secant of theta, nor can it be less than the cosine of theta. So as these get closer to being one, this, this expression's got nowhere to go. So its only choice is to be equal to one. And that way it gets squeezed in between this vice grip of secant theta and cosine theta. And that concludes this demonstration that the limit of th as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta equals one. That deserves a nice looking box. Bob's your uncle. Thanks for listening.